Did you know that before becoming a revolutionary leader, I was a seminarian and later became a priest? Hello, I am Tosa Maria Morelos, a tireless defender of Mexican independence. My fight brought us closer to a free and sovereign nation, but this passion cost me my life as I was executed for the cause. If you want to learn more about my story and the path of our independence, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Long live Mexico. I was born in 1765 in Valladolid, now Morelia, in Mycoacan. My childhood was marked by humility. My mother, Juana Maria Perez Pavan, was a hardworking woman, and my father, Manuel Morelos, a modest carpenter. After his early death, our family's finances were affected, leading me to work in various jobs from a young age. Although my education was initially limited, I always had an insatiable thirst for knowledge. At 25, I entered the Tridentine Seminary of Valladolid, where I had the opportunity to study and become a priest. During this period, my love life had significant moments. Despite my vows, I had relationships that resulted in several children, a situation that caused controversy. My youth was not only filled with personal challenges, but it was also a time of political and social turmoil. As I exercised my priesthood, the echoes of the French Revolution and other independence movements resonated in our land. Unbeknownst to me, these years would lay the foundation for the fight I would undertake for our territory's independence. From the beginning of my involvement in the insurgent movement, I became one of its most prominent leaders after the capture of Miguel Hidalgo. I led significant campaigns in the south of New Spain, establishing an insurgent government in Oaxaca, and proclaiming, in 1813, Mexico's independence at the Congress of Chilpancingo. It was there that I dictated the sentiments of the nation a document that set the ideological foundations for the fight and the vision for a new nation. One of my most notable achievements was the siege and capture of the city of Acapulco in 1813, a strategic port that, once in insurgent hands, hindered the advance and supply of the royalist troops. While leading the revolution, I was at the forefront of creating the first constitution of the Mexican nation in 1814, known as the Constitution of Apatzing. This legal text not only sought independence from Spanish rule, but also the abolition of slavery and equality for all citizens, revolutionary ideas for the time. On a personal level, although I was a priest, I had love relationships that, while causing controversies at the time, showed a more human side of me. I had several children out of wedlock, which in that era of moral rigidity, was the subject of criticism by some sectors. Additionally, although less known, I had a passion for botany, during my campaigns, I used to collect plant species and catalog them, a hobby that perhaps served to find comfort during the hardest moments of the war. In private, I often reflected on the richness and biodiversity of our lands, seeing in them a metaphor for the diversity and wealth of our people. After years of struggle and resistance, my fate reached its climax in 1815. Betrayed by one of my close collaborators, I was captured by the Royalist troops. My captor, Manuel de la Concha, respected my rank and treated the servant of the nation with dignity. I was taken to Mexico City in chains and exposed to public ridicule, a painful contrast to the years when I commanded armies and aspired to the creation of a free nation. My trial was swift, and although I faced my judges with dignity and firmness, the sentence was predictable. I would be executed. On the eve of my execution, while still in prison, I wrote my will, ensuring that my children had a secure future. On the 22nd of December, 1815, in San Cristobal y Catpec, I met my end. Despite adversity, I stood tall, with my gaze fixed on the horizon of a country for which I gave my life.